I just wanted to share where in the world we are in UC Links. And you can see that, that there are UC Links or UC Links related programs in about five out of seven continents. So we're in, we're in Europe, we're in, on the continent of Africa, we're in South America, we're in North America, and we're in Asia. So uh, we're gonna put this link up on our website so you can start to interact with this a little bit more, but just wanted to be able to graphically represent this. So the challenges, suffice it to say that, that there are huge challenges connected with the pandemic. And then there's also challenges aside from the pandemic, especially one thing that I was hearing a lot from um, faculty around California this year was, um, thanks for joining Linda, um, is uh, the challenges associated with continuing to teach the UC Links courses um, that a lot of times faculty members, they are doing this as uh, an extra, it's not part of the regular teaching load. And so um, it becomes very difficult um, to dedicate the time to it if they aren't, um, if it's not part of the regular teaching load, not getting credit for doing it. Um, and so that's a really key issue that, uh, that is, that we'll need to, to work at, uh, together to help, help transform and make that possible. Um, and I see thanks for the, for the stars also. I think the, the direct impacts on the undergraduate and the graduate students, all of these things are huge challenges, you know, individually for students, institutionally for being able to conduct research online, you know, barriers with IRBs, you know, having to go above and beyond and transform your courses. Um, so these are all ongoing as we are all continuing to navigate this pandemic. Um, and then likewise, you know, there's uh, other challenges in the in the communities that we work with, right? So how do we act, how do we actually have access to the our the kids and the youth and the families that we work with? I mean, Sandy, I know Sandy, you have you been able to connect with families or children yet? I know that's been an ongoing struggle at Irvine. I mean, I know Alessandra has um, through Mass mm -hmm. CEO and some of our students over in education, you know, help support her program. But yeah, at the other ones, no, because Girls yeah. Inc. is completely online and a lot of them are, you know, figuring things out. And as a community partner, I don't want to add to their challenges. <laughs> I keep calling them to say, how can we help out? How can we help out? Right. So, yeah, right. it's been this balance for us. So. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. I appreciate that. Yeah. So in with that, all of that as our background and our context and the ongoing challenges, in spite of all of that, there are, this is the part of the, the presentation that everybody really loved, right? It's like, what in the world? How are UC Links people continuing and being able to do this, the way that people are able to rise to these challenges continues to amaze and astound me. And so Carla, um, Carla is gonna, has really uh, become an expert on, on all of these various examples of innovative responses. And so this is what we wanted to talk about you with a little bit more. Um, okay, so one of the most awesome things that has happened with this pandemic is our ability to connect, right? Virtually, but we're connecting. So I wanna send a shout out to Whittier and to ECUC from Berkeley for your summer programs and knowing that you were gonna to have to respond. And so, you know, from that, like, I love that you were able to uh, come up with the, with the virtual vibes, the, the, the vibes, the chill vibes room, the, the spill the tea and the other one that I always forget the name of it, right? Uh, but that you, that you took initiative to make sure that the, the youth and they were gonna be able to be connected and that you could connect your undergraduates through this youth, right? Knowing that we had a pandemic on hand. So I, I really appreciate that you you guys went, or you ladies went out there and you did this work. Um, with that said too, uh, I love that Seppi did this presentation. It's called um, Estas Manos, right? And that one resonated, I mean, beyond. John from uh, Santa Barbara was there. It was great to see the parents engaged, to see the adults be engaged, 
that the, the look on their faces, right? That they were able to share their poetry. It was, it was empowering. And to say, you know, it really made me feel good because we're not just helping the, the youth, which is important, but, but the parents also need a support system. So go with here, right? And then also with that, the ECUC Breakfast Club, they get together 30 minutes before the formal day and they have open conversation. They really wanted that. They really wanted to be able to engage in a less formal way. Uh, and then Corre La Voz at UC Santa Cruz is doing the online teatro and they do it the way that newscasters represent the news. So that seems like you know another way to be creative. The Beta Lab at UC Davis is doing activities so you can follow their links to the videos in case you want you want to have some kind of idea of what to do with your own youth, right? And then of course, where I'm center, right? Um, the pop-up art on the go as our response to the community crisis of COVID-19 and the mental and emotional health that our families were suffering, uh, um, which I found out through a survey that I did, we decided to do pop-up art on the go. And so what we do is we give prompts to the youth and their families and then they answer them and they bring uh, photos and then we put them at, at a central location and they drive around them. And of course we throw confetti and we play music for them. And the coolest part about this was that we just had one like two weeks ago and uh, uh, UCSD undergraduates and a PhD, a PhD student came and they were part of it. So they really got to see the work that's being done on the ground. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're moving forward. There are a lot of other stuff that's happening that I couldn't put into all of this, right? Because there's so much. Um, but so if we move forward, Mara, for the next slide, let's see. Uh, and these are like, uh, so now, right, how, how has the network um, responded? Well, the network has responded by putting together UC Link's Google Calendar, because that way you can see what's coming and what you can come to, right? So thank you, Mara, for putting that together, but also the resources webpage. It's a trove, a treasure. I use it all the time for all of my work that I'm doing as an undergraduate. The world map, yep, head blown. When you see it in a map like that, you're thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, we're everywhere, right? Somebody go to Antarctica, not me though. Okay, and then also coffee hours, right? Round tables. Uh, and um, we've been able to connect and engage with all of you, which what has happened has been connection and engagement with one another, right? But then also to have like, you, you see um, Santa Barbara and John and their team come on board and teach us Chamboard and Padlet and Swapcard and Gathertown. Oh my goodness, I'm swimming in all of the awesomeness, right? That And they were here yesterday, um, right? And then, but also the Twitter account, the Instagram account, the YouTube channel, the UC Links Facebook, please go and give us love, use uh, hashtag UC Links, right? And we follow you back and I will comment on anything that I see because you are all blessings. And I love seeing your pictures and I love seeing your your participants be engaged. So those are the innovative responses on our behalf. And then from this work that we've been doing, thank God, pandemic, there are good things to be thankful for, right? That um, collaborations are happening. You have the Wellbeing Club with Amy and Sahara, right? Where uh, Amy and Sahara are piloting a program in Africa right now. And it, the, the point of the program is to teach the youth, the youth how, to, how to, you know, bring their emotions and understand them and how to the well-being of the group and you know how to respond to things that the stressors because I mean I can't imagine how terrible it is to be a youth and being, having to suffer through this pandemic right um, also the great cl uh, collaboration between CEPI and uh, uh, La Colonia Eden Gardens Foundation that the program that they're putting together are for reals, like mind blowing here right now, we're engaging the parents. Again, as a response to the survey that we did last summer, one of the things we found out was that the parents need to be engaged. And so now uh, CEPI uh, is coming together and sharing in what they're doing, right? There's a doctor that comes to speak to them in a book club. And I think Zumba, I don't know, weightlifting, I don't know, wonderful things that are happening because of these beautiful collaborations. Also the Youth Summit, thank you, Santa Barbara. Thank you, UC Irvine and Whittier and everybody else who is totally, completely involved in this. We really want to make sure that your youth have a say in, in, in this work. You know, uh, um, Diana is, is instrumental in doing this stuff. Her team is phenomenal. And then the other part is I have to wake up early on Thursday mornings to go to uh, visit Tom. So one of the things that we love is like the virtual sets that we do. So I go and I speak um, with Tom and his group of international scholars and we talk about everything you can think about. Uh, especially like, you know, racial, racial issues and injustices and how do we breathe through, right, like the changes that are happening in the world. Like how do we come together and talk about music and how, what, how we can continue changing right, education programs. So that's a, that's a blessing. And also Mara and um, 
uh, Oriana came to visit that class. That was awesome. I forgot her first name. So I apologize. And so, and the, 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 my, like my favorite part, yes, there you go. And also like my favorite part of the work that we're doing in this virtual site, right? Like we went to Whittier, we've gone to other, uh, other, um, well, actually Whittier, I really enjoy going to yours. Uh, but one of the, one of the highlights for me was uh, going to visit Alessandra's program and speaking to the undergraduates, right? And having them ask me questions. And I mean, I hope I did good. I could see their faces were, you know, super engaged. I hope, you know, that what I said resonated with them, but it gives us all an opportunity to come together, right? Um, I love that you're all doing great work with all of the people in your community. And I'm going to allow myself an opportunity here to say to you how grateful I am for you and all the work that you're doing. Please go home, pat yourselves on the back because it's been a terrible pandemic, but there's been a lot of growth. So we've been busy cross pollinating. And so one last thing before I hand it over to Mara again is I would like to celebrate you with some confetti. Yes, this is how it happens at our parties. Please take the time to realize that the life you're doing is life changing. The work you're doing is making a difference and that we are the people that are making a difference, not just here, but across the world. And I'm grateful to be part of this wonderful team and I'm grateful to work with all of you. And I'll give it back to Mara. Oh, great. So now I have to follow that up, right? <laughs> How do I follow Carla and confetti? And <laughs> Carly, you can just drop the mic and we'll just shut it off here because anything I have to say, exactly, right? This is my life. <laughs> and then here comes Mara and she's going to talk about the innovative research. And <laughs> I'm teasing. It's just all so spectacular. Carla, I just love working with you every single day. And I just, I saw Diana's, uh, comment just recognizing like wow we have been busy right and I think that's part of what we really wanted to reflect back because people are just in it in it in it day in and day out and Carla and I also in the process of putting this together our minds just keep being blown like I knew we were busy but like we're not just busy, we're busy creating and sharing and innovating, right? It's not just busy work, it's meaningful work. And, and, and so that, I think that's what we really want to talk about next too, I think, is how do we continue this, right? How do we leverage this? And um, I'm going to, there's also spectacular research because that's going on. And I just, this is here for you all to look at as well, because like people like Amy and our partner, Jose Luis La Luesa in Barcelona, who works um, with the Roma community and also works with Beatriz in Seville and Glenda Hull, um, uh, people are, are, are turning around and publishing this in their academic venues, right? Which is one of the currencies that we do need to work in for our profession, right? Um, and so people are turning around and hitting the ground and doing this. And so I've put, uh, I've put links to um, these papers here so you can read them um, for people who are uh, native Spanish speakers or, or non-native Spanish speakers. Um, the paper by Jose Luis is in Spanish. Um, there's an abstract in English. And so I did include some of that there. Um, but this work is just... Um, people are just doing it and working so hard and bringing forth this in this time of, of real change and really trying to look at it for um, as a time of opportunity, right? A time to reimagine. And this is what Jose Luis and his colleagues are talking about in their paper um, that this is, a, this is a, a profound crisis and that we are all working so hard and it's an opportunity to really reimagine education in the 21st century. And I think that's what we're all really busy doing. And so this is the other part of the uh, presentation that I think people did like was this opportunity to really, to, to think about this together. Um, and I think that's where the juice comes from, like when Carla's talking, right? And, and everybody seeing, what it is that we're doing. And so I think one of the questions, one of the questions that we have really 
is, um, you know, this is what this is what is all going in going on individually. Um, but what does it mean? Uh, what would this reimagining look like if we were undertaking this collectively, right, across the UC Links network, rather than individually? Like, what can we leverage together that we can't on our own? And thinking about, um, and I think there have been lots of opportunities that people have been taking advantage of. Um, welcome back, Kathy. Um, there are lots of opportunities that people are taking advantage of, like our office hours and, and everything else. Carly, do you mind putting the links back in the um, chat for thanks? Got you. Kathy, since she's back. Um, but just thinking about how we can um, come together. What, what does it mean? What would it mean for us to work more collaborative? I think we are already working more collaboratively in this time of, of the pandemic. Um, but what does it mean to, uh, to leverage this? Um, and so one thing, we've transformed this slide a little bit based on the input from yesterday, because we had this conversation yesterday with the partners who were um, on the call with us. And, um, and we talked about um, at the, edited, the, the idea that uh, Marjorie put forth about a UC Links edited volume as one um, great option that definitely would um, speaks to our university side of our university community links. Um, and also the discussion was also focusing on um, the need to, to, uh, to be able to work in other mediums as well, potentially in order to address the community side. You know, maybe we need to put together a compendium of activities that we've learned or strategies or um, what might that be? And also potentially including um, languages other than English in, in our work. Um, and we also shared this cultural praxis website is a great place. It's a, it's a partner, it's a website that partners with the Mind, Culture and Activity Journal. Um, and so uh, you, can, you can publish things. There are pieces there that are published um, that are not uh, formatted like uh, uh, the MCA journal. It's, it's a website. And so there are pieces that are shorter or more reflective or um, or kind of just different. There's a, there's a, you know, a, a description of a dream that I had right before the, the U.S. election that's on there right now. Um, and so there's also a video series on there. Um, so there's lots of different, and it's published in both English and Spanish currently. Um, so that's another interesting medium um, as well. So I think, um, yeah, and so just thinking about um, the next I, is, you know, so, so the going back, oops, to the previous slide, what did this reimagining look like if we're able to undertake this collectively? And then the next idea is kind of where, how do we further this conversation um, next? Um, and we have a Padlet there that, um, that we started after our last office hours discussion. Um, and we have our, another office hours coming up on Monday and we have the conference. So I think this is just kind of the, um, the open question at this point um, to think about kind of what next for us. 